Thank you for finding your table, principals. You can go ahead and give a little wave so that your communities can find you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Thomas. I'm the Assistant Superintendent for the Clovis East area. Welcome to our area boundary review meeting. Before we get started, I just wanted to share a few important pieces of information. If you have children here tonight and you would like them to utilize our child care, we have child care over in the back. You can see our uh, child care attendant waving. They'll take them off into the staff lounge. Also, over here to the side of the room, um, Dr. Trojan will wave. We have bathrooms out this way if you'd like to maybe use the restroom. Also, if you have not found your table yet, your principals are at the school tables for you to join. If you are here from another area, welcome. We also have a table for you. It is labeled our other area schools, and they are off in the back, and they're waving towards you right now. So if we have anything, anybody here from another school, please feel free to join that table. I wanted to introduce a few important guests. Joining us tonight is our superintendent, Dr. Fulmer, Deputy Superintendent, Mr. Norm Anderson, Associate Superintendents, Mr. Michael Johnson, Dr. Mark Hammock, and Mr. Barry Jager. We sincerely appreciate you being here tonight. Our community meetings are the most important part of this process. We appreciate the time you've taken to be here, and we really and truly are here ready to listen. We're wanting to hear feedback from our parents and our community members. Tonight's meeting is very important. It is intentionally designed to engage our community in conversations and to gather critical feedback. Boundary changes and processing feedback with our community is critical before we move forward with making recommendations for revision to our current attendance boundaries. This process is not unfamiliar to the people in the Clovis East area. Many of you just recently had the opportunity to provide feedback during the elementary boundary changes that occurred as we welcomed our newest elementary school, Hirayama Elementary, to the Clovis East area. Those of you who participated witnessed firsthand how important and valued your feedback was during the process, because many of the items of feedback that came from those meetings actually helped change um, proposed maps. So we're excited tonight to hear your feedback. Conversations around the challenges faced in our district because of our existing boundaries and the boundary timeline may have already occurred in site start meetings. We have also been sharing information on our website and gathering input from online comments. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to engage in discussions, provide commentary, and ask questions at your tables. On January 26, proposed boundary scenarios were released online, and tonight we are here to review those scenarios with you provide you the opportunity for each of our school communities to closely examine those scenarios and gather feedback on your pros and cons, identified from your unique perspective as members of our neighborhoods and our community. The Clovis East area has another area boundary meeting on February 6th at 5.30 right here in this room, and other boundary meetings such as this are taking place at each of our high school areas, and feedback gathered from all of these meetings, including the online feedback will be studied by the administration and presented to our governing board before any decisions are made. I would now, now like to introduce our Assistant Superintendent of Facility Services, Denver Stairs, to review the need that is driving our study of attendance boundaries and the process and guidelines used to evaluate the relative merit of our potential boundaries. All right, thank you very much. And again, welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, this is really, really important work uh, and we can't do it without your feedback. So please, if you take nothing away tonight, 
uh, please hear us say that we are, we are actively seeking your feedback and we want to hear from you. You have QR codes on your table. Uh, you can scan that. That takes you to an online form. We also have computers in the back where you can fill out that same form. That form is also on our district website. You'll also have an opportunity to share out at a table or at your tables tonight with your principals and then share out as a group at the end. So let's talk a little bit about where we are and what's going on. We're here tonight because our district remains a growing district. So we have continued growth in the cities of Fresno and Clovis. And what you see here on the screen is just a group of polygons. And I'm gonna try and point to them here. If you see the red polygons all over, this green area down here at the bottom is the, is the existing Clovis East area. And you can see everything that is a green polygon. Those are housing tracks that we are currently tracking that will be fully built out with people living in them in the next one to three years. And the yellow ones will have people uh, living there in two to four years, blue three to seven, and the red seven plus. So that gives you just kind of a, a rough background of what we're tracking and why we're looking uh, forward at the district as a whole to how uh, we can make sure that we accommodate the, the continued growth in the district. So what is the purpose of our boundary study? So when we moved forward with opening the Terry Bradley Educational Center, we had to create a boundary for the new Terry Bradley area. We need to relieve overcrowding at the REC because we know that all of the continued growth in this area will severely impact uh, the students that we have on this campus. And we need to be prepared for continued residential development in the district, because as I said, it's happening on both, or it's happening across our district. New attendance area is needed for our new ed center, and we need to maximize our existing facilities in the district. So we have, if we did nothing in, in the upcoming years, we would have several schools that would be far exceeding their capacity. Those schools are Fugman, Riverview, Cedarwood, Cedarwood, Dry Creek, Rayburn, and Clovis East. When we have overcrowding at our schools, it stretches our facilities, our bathrooms, what services we can provide to kids, our cafeterias, playgrounds, etc. The opposite is also true if we did nothing in the coming years, we have several schools that are starting to get too small. Those schools are Jefferson, Maple Creek, Nelson, Pinedale, Sierra Vista, Valley Oak, and Weldon. That, the same is true for the small schools. When you have a small school and you have a limited number of students and staff, it's hard to maintain the equity amongst the district. So when we look at both the schools that are overcrowded and the schools that would be under uh, enrolled, that is part of the reason that we're having this conversation as well. This is a heat map if we did nothing to the district. Uh, if no changes were made, some schools would be underutilized, others would be extremely overcrowded. So the darker red it gets, closer to the, the maroon, that's a school that is at 100 to 150% of their capacity. The lighter it gets, you see those schools are under-enrolled. So a little bit about our process and what led us to tonight. We started a boundary committee uh, back in September, and we met from September to December, and we, there was over 50 people on the committee that represented, uh, staff people, that represented every walk of life in our district and from every area. We reviewed the demographic enrollment projections and new housing and city planning data. We developed two initial recommendations that you've seen and, and or you have on your tables with you tonight. That leads us to tonight. Tonight is our first community input meeting. Many of you have already shared information on our online form and we thank you. Uh, we've been reading those uh, daily. So with this community input, it starts tonight and it goes through March. So that means if you leave here tonight and you think about something that you didn't share, we are still accepting community feedback on that form 
please share. You'll also have opportunities at uh, your SART meetings and any other parent meetings that you might have on your campus. So don't feel like if you didn't share something tonight that you've lost that opportunity. We will ultimately have a final proposal that will go to the board on, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that a final proposal of the map that will be released on March 29th and our board will take final action on that in April. So as we're starting this process really in September, the final board action will be in April, but keep in mind these boundaries do not take effect until August of 2025, okay? So we know that we're out in front and we wanna do that so we have plenty of time to plan and share information uh, with all of you. A little bit more about the, the timeline. So to Friday, we released those maps. And then January 30th through February 8th is when we'll be having our community meetings. So we've got one every night with the exception of Friday this week and next week. Uh, we have two for the Clovis East area. So we have um, plenty of opportunities. And then February through March, that's when all of your schools will have their school SART meetings and uh, we will continue to gather public input from you at that time. April 3rd, <coughs> excuse me, is when the recommended map is presented to the governing board for their discussion. And then April 12th is when we will stop uh, accepting feedback on the online form. So the, the date that is, might be important for you is April 12th is when that form will close and you won't be able to submit feedback on that. April 17th is when our board will take action on, on the map that is proposed. And then again, those boundaries take effect in the fall of 2025. Why do we have school attendance boundaries? Uh, we've, we've heard this question come through uh, on some of the online forms. And so as many of you know, in our district, we have an area concept. So everything is, is really set up by the high school and then all of the schools that feed into that school. Uh, and we believe in keeping that together. We believe that it creates connectivity and identity within uh, the neighborhood. We like to create schools that are sized to offer a wider range of offerings to our students. And that works both ways, too big and too small. We like to be uh, cognizant of where we are there and give opportunities to all of our students, maximize efficient and effective use of our resources to, for all of our students. So that is general information about why, uh, what led us here, what process we've taken, and why we have boundaries. At this point, if you are visiting us from an area outside of the Clovis East area, we're gonna dive into the Clovis East area a little bit on, on what you see on the screen, uh, but as if you're on the live stream, when we go to the table talk, you'll get an opportunity to see the specific slides for each of our areas in the district. But for now, uh, we are going to just take a little bit of a look of why do we need to address or adjust the boundaries in the Clovis East area. So like I told you, uh, when you saw the slide of what schools were, were getting to be impacted, the Reagan Educational Center is currently 200 students over capacity and continues from develop in Clovis's Loma Vista and the Southeast areas of Fresno. We know because we're tracking uh, every, every house that is starting to come out of the ground, our office tracks. Uh, we have uh, someone in our office that physically drives every new neighborhood and counts, and we know that that is continuing to, to happen. And uh, we are opening the Terry P. Bradley Educational Center, and so we need to create the boundaries for that area. Unbalanced enrollment at schools requires modifications to avoid over and under enrolled schools. So if we take a look just at the Clovis East area, this is just a blow up of that map that I showed you earlier. And so everybody in here right now is looking at their neighborhood specifically, which is exactly what we want you to do, right? The reason that you're sitting by area by school is because we want you to uh, focus your efforts and your eyes just on your area. But what's important when you look at this slide is the number of the number of new growth that we're seeing pop up all within the Clovis East area, because we know all of this is coming. Now, some of it might happen a little bit further out. Like I said, all of the red we know is seven plus years out. We are fairly, or we are firmly confident in our number in the one to three and two to four as we work with our development community and we track uh, what their permits are and their 
their fees that they're paying uh, for their development. So this is the reason that we're looking at what's happening. A lot of this is, again, the creation of the Terry Bradley Educational Center. Over the next decade, if we look at enrollment, this is what starts to drive our decisions. So you can see, if we're just focusing on the Clovis East area, our projected growth in the Clovis East area is over 2,000 students. That has to do with all of the, the neighborhood growth that, that I just showed you. And you can see uh, it's not equal across the district. Buchanan area will lose 500 students. The Clovis High area is losing 920 students. The Clovis North area is growing 2,400 students. And again, if you look at those maps, that's where all of the growth is happening right now. It's in the southeast and it's up in the northeast. Right, or north, yeah, in the northeast part of town in Fresno, right by Clovis North. And so with Heritage Grove, that's what we're tracking. There was a threshold uh, that Loma Vista, which is the neighborhood that, is, that pushed all of your development, Loma Vista had to get to 60% sold before they could open uh, sales in Heritage Grove. So when that happened, we started to see a small shift. Uh, obviously, Loma Vista has not slowed down, okay? So our commitment throughout this process is to ensure facilities are equitable across the district. Our goal is that once you step foot on our campus, when you go inside the building, your kids get the same opportunity no matter what school they're at uh, and no matter what part of town they're in. That is our commitment. We recognize and value that our schools belong to our community. Uh, that is a firm uh, belief of our district. We want to use our resources wisely and efficiently. And the reason that we bring that up is because when I talk to you about schools that are under-enrolled, uh, if we continued to build new schools and we, we didn't fill up our existing schools, that's not a good use of, of your taxpayer dollars. So we know that we need to fully utilize the campuses that we already have built, especially with the uh, escalation and inflation that we're seeing in construction prices today. And which leads me to, we only want to build new schools when it's necessary. Our guiding principles, this set of principles, I'm, it's on this slide now, you're going to have it, we're going to put it back up for you as you're looking at the map. And so what we ask is that when you're looking at the map and you're, you're focusing on your area, compare the map that you're looking at, both scenarios, uh, to these guiding principles. That's what we're asking that you, that you compare your feedback to. So... Number one, maximizing existing facility space while moving the least number of students. Please, if you hear me say nothing else tonight, our goal when we do this is not to come in and move all kinds of students. Boundary changes are not a pleasant experience. They're not, they're not pleasant for you as a parent nor us, right? We have kids in the district. Many of us have been through boundary changes. So we try and do it to fully utilize uh, the existing facility space that we have while moving the least number of students possible. We want to keep and value neighborhood schools and keep those neighborhoods together. Hear me say this though, when we talk about neighborhoods, we're talking about residential development. Okay, so many times you might live in a, in a neighborhood, the way they're building neighborhoods now with a walking path and a trail and it joins maybe a Lennar track and a Wilson track and a Bonadelli track. So when we do this and we're looking at how do we keep neighborhoods together, we're focusing on trying to keep that residential development, the track together. What we will not do is split, even if it's Bonadelli on one side and Lennar on the other and you walk out of your, your driveways and you face each other, we will not split those. It is not, uh, it, it has happened in the past and it, and it will, where we will split some tracks down a back fence line, okay? And that's because we're trying to make things be as equitable and when we look at all of the factors, that does happen. But please, you're here to, to provide us feedback, so, so please do that. Create boundaries that will last five to 10 years whenever possible. This is a growing challenge for us as a district that continues to have uh, new enrollment. Because if we were a, a, a shrinking district or a district that was stagnant in growth, we could, we could guarantee you that we were gonna keep our boundaries the same for longer than that. What we know is if you look, if you think back to that slide with all of the polygons and all the future growth, there's a ton of new growth coming to our district. Uh, and there's 
it is more challenging than ever for developers as they're trying to get homes uh, out of the ground. And we want to balance enrollment across our high school areas. So who is impacted? This is a slide. Yeah, don't everybody raise your hand. I know, I know you're here because you're, because you're being impacted. Uh, who is impacted? So this is an important slide because we've gotten lots of questions. So this is the transfer rule, okay? So who, who is going? Based on a student's grade in 2025 and 26. So, so move your kids up a couple years if, depending on what grade they are in the fall of 25, that's what we're talking about. Any student TK through fifth grade will follow the new boundary, okay? So the new boundaries, whatever it might be, right? You have two scenarios right now. By the time we're done uh, and whatever gets proposed, whatever that final boundary that's adopted by the board, if you have a student that's in TK through fifth, they will follow that boundary. Sixth grade students, and this is important, sixth grade students have the option to finish at their current school, but would follow the new boundary in middle school, okay? So for example, if you have a sixth grader that wants to stay in sixth grade with all of their buddies, they can stay there, but as a middle school student, they're going to track to the new middle school, okay? Younger sibling have the option to do that as well for one year. So if you have a sixth grader and a second grader, they can both stay at their original school for that year, but the, the second grader doesn't get to stay forever. They get to do it once. Or oftentimes we have parents say, no, I'm just going to go ahead and move them now and let them get established. That's okay too. It's not a package deal, okay? But you, you can choose to have it that way um, for the one year. All seventh through ninth grade students will follow the new boundary. Why? Because our purpose in creating these new boundaries is to develop the Terry Bradley area. And if we didn't have seventh through ninth grade students, we would have no new school. That school is opening seven, eight, nine. And so all of those students are going to create the new school and the new boundary, okay? 10th through 12th grade students will remain at their existing site. After allocating all the staff and using the new attendance areas, existing transfer offers will be offered based on space availability. And existing open enrollments approved through sixth grade will be in effect, but would follow the new secondary boundary if applicable, okay? Board policy 5116 outlines accommodations for the siblings transfer rule. So we have what's called the sibling rule. The sibling rule states this, any seventh, eighth, or ninth grade student who have an older sibling who will be in 10th through 12th grade may apply for a transfer based on their sibling. Okay, so if you have a seventh grader, I just told you on the slide before that, that no matter what, they're following the new boundary. That's true. This is another layer. So if you have a seventh grader and a junior, your seventh grader could stay at their existing track because they have an older sibling that is already there. If the above applies to your family, younger students from the same family may also enroll at the intermediate school and then high school of the original attendance area on an approved sibling transfer so long as their secondary enrollment is concurrent with an older sibling, okay? So if you have a senior in 25 and they graduate and then you have a second grader in 26, that doesn't work, right? So they have to be concurrent. We will come around uh, and answer those questions or your, your principals can answer those questions uh, as, we, as we get moving. So now as we look at where we are in our master facility timeline, I've talked to you a little bit about uh, the Terry Bradley Educational Center and what's happening. What we know first is that next August, Hiriyama is opening. So we just went through this boundary process uh, a little over a year ago to establish the boundary for Hiriyama Elementary. And then in 2025, we will open uh, TBEC. We will open 
the intermediate school and high school, seven, eight, nine. We will grow a year, or we will grow a grade level every year. And then elementary school 36 is tentatively planned to open in 2030. That is based on enrollment and what happens as we continue uh, to track that enrollment. Okay, now if we look at the scenarios, you all have these maps on your tables. We also have blow ups of them around the room. And so I'm gonna go over them at a very high level. First of all, I'm gonna make sure that everybody is understanding clearly what they're looking at. And then I will focus a little bit of what's happening just in the Clovis East area. And then we're, we're gonna turn it over, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Anderson and let him lead us through our table talk. So two scenarios, we have scenario one and scenario A, there's both a secondary and an elementary uh, boundary, or I'm sorry, scenario. And so I wanna make sure, first of all, when we look up here, all of this area that is, that is green will be what is the existing Clovis East boundary. So we're creating the Tebeck boundary area. Those elementary schools that on, this, on these proposed maps that will feed into and become the new Terry Bradley educational area, Young Elementary, Boris, Hiriyama, Fancher, and TK, those are going to be the new Tebeck area elementary schools. The schools that will remain in the Clovis East area, Miramani, or as Gettysburg is coming back to the Clovis East area. Gettysburg was here before, and this change will come back. And Freedom and Reagan. Both areas will have five elementary schools that will feed their enrollment. So when we look at this, I'm going to first of all point out, if you look at these red flags, those are just uh, signifying where our schools are. They're titled. The dark lines, the dark heavy lines are the existing boundary, okay? So this is, we're looking at high school areas. So this is, this dark line and everything that is light blue is the Clovis North boundary. This is all the Clovis West boundary, Buchanan, Clovis High. This green would be Clovis East and this beige color will be Clovis South or Tebeck. If you see a cross, a cross hatched area, those are all proposed changes. So anywhere you see a cross hatch on the map is a proposed change. If you see a blue dashed line around a cross hatched area, that is signifying that there's a difference between scenario one and scenario A. So we tried to make it be easier for you to look at so you don't need a compass and a decoder ring to do that. But you can see anything that has this blue dashed line is showing that it's different from area to area. On the right hand side, you have the first column is the school's current capacity. You have their current enrollment, the enrollment in 25 and the enrollment in 28. Those numbers are color coded. If it gets to be, the darker blue it gets, it gets to be lower and lower in enrollment. The, the darker red it gets, the higher over enrollment it gets. So we used 500 as the threshold for low and 800 as the threshold for high there. So you can see the secondary scenarios for the Clovis East area, there's no change. And then the elementary areas for scenario one and scenario A, there are two changes, okay? The first one, which is the same on, on both, is that Gettysburg is moving to the Clovis East area. So you can see all of Gettysburg is going to be moving to the Clovis East area. And then as I toggle through these, if you look in this area right here, this is the Oraz community. Okay, and you can see, oops, I'm sorry, there's a difference there between one neighborhood or two neighborhoods that will be transitioning to Miramonte. Okay, and then in both scenarios, this pocket of freedom will be moving to Gettysburg. Okay, so that's, that's how you read those maps. 
Again, the reason that you're here is to, to provide feedback on those maps. And I know many of you have looked at them and already submitted, but we're asking that you do that again tonight uh, so that we can have a conversation in here. At this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Norm Anderson, our deputy superintendent, to come up and lead us through our conversations at our tables. Thank you, Mr. Stairs. Um, I saw some of you taking pictures. This presentation will be available online, um, so you'll be able to access it there if you want. You can still take pictures, but you'll have it at home um, if you want to make it available as well. Maybe just a, a little before we get to our table talk. 17 years ago, um, I became the principal of Clovis North Educational Center when it was first opening. And there were no elementary schools that were supposed to go to the school because they both went to Clovis West and Buchanan. And um, not many people wanted to go to Clovis North Educational Center. Um, they were all going to Clovis West. Buchanan at that time was over 3,000 students. It's, Clovis East is going to be bigger than Buchanan was at that time. It was blowing up. It was just humongous. Um, Clovis West was well over 2,000. It needed a new, a new school, a new area. So I'll just say 17 years ago, I remember sitting here and I remember talking to elementary parents who didn't want to move to a new school because they, you know, they were Golden Eagles and they were Bears. And that is a hard conversation, so we're with you on that part. I would just say that your input in this does matter. You see two samples of secondary and two samples of elementary maps. It, the, the map that gets proposed to the governing board won't be either one. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a merge of some ideas that come out of these meetings. It's never been the exact same map because we, we do take what you say and your ideas and we research all of those based on all the demographics that we have access to. So I just urge you to, to, to be open to the conversation. Um, what we're gonna do this evening is provide you an opportunity to learn how to use a clicker. There we go. Um, with uh, the principals at your table are gonna facilitate the conversation. You're going to have post-it paper over here where you are going to share as, as your table conversations, you're gonna go, this is an idea that we wanna make sure gets communicated to the team. You're gonna write it on the poster paper and we're gonna have a chance, hopefully at the end, just kinda go around and make sure top three, four um, comments or thoughts about the, the, the consensus of the group and the tables. There is a QR code that you'll see the paper on your table there, the QR code. I would urge you not to use that just right now. Get the consensus of the table, ideas that you wanna be able to share, put those on the poster paper. Then at the end of the night, if there's something that doesn't get shared out, if there's something that you um, want to share, Use that QR code, because sometimes it'll just be one family feels this way and not the, not the table. That's a good QR code one right there. Okay, so we might be able to try to do that. So you're gonna review scenarios at the individual boundaries, looking at it through your lens, your scope, um, as Mr. Stair said, your neighborhood, your back fence, your front fence, fence, all of those. You're gonna record the conversations and the recommendations, and then the principals at the end will report out key points. Our goal, is to start reporting out at 6.30. We value your time, so we want to try to, um, to allow time for that. Um, all recorded comments are analyzed by the administration and reviewed with the governing board. So we're doing this six times, five more times after this. Um, we're going to look at all the poster papers. We'll put them in a room. We'll look at the common themes that we're seeing and, um, and look and see when those recommendations make sense to change or tweak the map a little bit to make those accommodations. So I'm gonna leave this slide up here because there'll be a lot of ideas that we have but remembering that the guiding principles are what guide some of these major decisions. I know it may not agree with an individual decision but the major decisions as you look at a school district um, boundary change. So I will leave these boundary um, um, guideline guiding principles up here. I'm gonna turn it over to your site principles at this time. Um, if you have one parent, we have two parents or three parents, all that information is gonna be valuable. Um, please, with the larger tables, um, we'll come around and help uh, navigate that conversation as well. We're gonna have the poster papers that are brought by, so maybe somebody with really nice penmanship can, uh, can write on the, uh, on the poster board. We'll turn it over and we will check back in about uh, 20 to 25 minutes.
Are we ready to share? We have a thumbs up, we have a thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up. We have a thumbs down. Was that for Mr. Stairs or was that for, I'm just gonna, I'm just kidding. Okay, we'll go two more minutes, two more minutes, and then we'll do a little share out. You may have a lot of other highlights on your paper, but if you can try to narrow it down to three or four, just for a day, just for, hello, hello. No, I don't think so, not right now. And what I'm going to ask I have to go back. Oh, this is going to be great. Okay. Oh. Well, should we have the principals come up then? We can't take the microphone out there. Okay. I don't know if the micro can the microphone go out on the floor? Okay, we're going to try it. Oh. Okay, I think Pitbull could make it work at Save Mart Center, but I can't do it. Okay, so then we're gonna have principals. If I can get your attention real quick. Clap once if you can hear my voice. Clap twice if you like Mr. Stairs. Oh my goodness. Hey, you're all going. <laughs> all right. Um, I think what we'll do then is have the principals, if you can um, maybe come right here, maybe that'll be good. And if we start getting feedback, we like feedback, we just don't like this feedback from the microphone, so we'll see if we can. Should we just start right here? You got it. All right, tell us what principal's name and the school you're from. All right. Perfect. We have two attendance areas, potentially, shifting. Okay. Getting thrown out of our classrooms and our Miles, no transportation being offered, no sidewalks on the way, 
and two major intersections with um, no crossing guards. So that safety really is the most important thing. Um, just a consideration um, to grandfather currently enrolled um, students. We know that that varies for every elementary school and that impacts of that across the district is something that really has to be considered. For us, it's only 55 students. Um, and for other areas, other elementary schools, it could be a lot more. So looking at that, for us, it doesn't put us too high over or they work too low. So for our school, we feel like that makes sense. Okay, I'm the principal at Sanford Creek, and our elementary attendance boundaries don't change on either scenario. Um, so our only concern from our parent was that um, with the new Clovis South or Tebeck area being closer to Sanford Creek than Clovis East is, um, will there still be bus transportation because we have some transportation transportation issues with parents at our site? Um, other than that, we don't have any other concerns. Major Mr. Walker, principal of Boyd Elementary. Uh, we're pretty much in the same boat as Sanford Creek. We're not really impacted this year. We were last year for conversations with the new elementary school, but we're not really impacted by the boundary changes for this year. Um, most of the conversation came from what's going to happen once our students become that seventh, eighth, or ninth grader. So some of the, um, it was a positive, but also a question was just open enrollment. And then again, understanding that sibling rule, but also a concern about the one year transfer, like their transfer is approved just for the one year, and then what happens after that. Um, the other part was, uh, or the other point was again about safe walkways. Again, in our area, there's still going to be a lot of buildings, but what kind of safe paths or walkways will we have for our students to then get to um, the high school, or junior high school in that um, new area? And, um, but again, yeah, positive, being able to have a brand new school um, to create a brand new culture, um, and that's all the new experience is opening up a new school for our, who will be at the sixth graders next year, who will be those first two for those seventh graders um, over at the new campus. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sarah McElroy. I'm representing my organized Bearcats tonight. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the most of our concerns we have an elementary boundary change in which some of our students potentially could go to Maramani. Most of our concerns have to do with the safety of the houses we get to school. Kind of rivals that up the hill in the snow story that our parents all told us because they would have to head down to a very busy corner that has a lot of driveways, cross the canal a few times, six lanes of traffic, high speeds, um, through neighborhoods that they don't know, um, past alcohol and smoke shops and all these different elements to get to school. And right now it's about an eight minute walk to this neighborhood to get to Ores. They say, they walk it, they say 30 minutes from here to get to their mind. So it's really how do these kids get to school safely? I don't think any of us would send our kids on here is what they're saying. Um, but we, they offered some suggestions too. So there's a couple of neighbors they can send them out if they're curious, they're being built up and they're wondering, are there some potential warm neighbors that are in the foreground? that could fill this gap for Miramani and help build up their school without sending our kids um, out of their school and then across the busy street. So that was it for Aura. Good evening, I'm Andrew Nanuboy, the principal at Texas Cutler. And going to Cold the South is not an issue. The consideration was if they, uh, the parents could be grandfathered in the parcel of 297E. There's a kind of a half of the subdivision there, some ranch style homes. They would like to stay at TK, so just a consideration there. And then the distance from where these homes are to Hariyama is about 1.6 miles, and some of it's unpaved with sidewalks or just asphalt. And from their current area to um, TK is 0.6. So just a consideration there. Hello, everyone. My name is Ray Gomez. I am the principal at Young Elementary. Um, there's a few concerns over in our area, uh, one being um, the safety for our students. Uh, currently, um, sitting over at our table, we do have um, a family who owns some of the property there, and currently we are curious about what the infrastructure is going to look like because we do not have uh, bus transportation um, in a majority of, of our neighborhoods. Um, so the transportation is, is something to, to take into consideration. 
as most of our students will be walking through um, you know, orchards and, and undeveloped sidewalk areas. Um, the young neighborhood that had to, to change um, schools on three separate occasions. So uh, some of the questioning is how uh, it was determined that young would be going to um, Seabed um, based on, on the walking distance for some of our students who, or some of our families who actually bought in that area so that they can walk here to Clovis East. Um, there was some questioning about uh, why Clovis, there are certain neighborhoods that uh, feed into Clovis High School, but uh, are a lot closer to Clovis East, which means the, the, uh, the walk is a lot easier um, for those families. So we got a few pages here. They were also very curious about uh, our athletics and the co-curricular development for, for our students. We have many students who are involved in athletics here at Clovis East and participate um, in our clubs and our programs. So uh, questions about the development of those programs and how long they would take before we get large in sports. Because uh, we do have some, some athletes on our, our campus that have the potential to be varsity athletes as freshmen. Um, our current bravery kids, you know, there was questioning about the build and how, how long is it going to take before c is completely uh, built so that they can meet with some of those benefits of this new campus area that we are, are building. Um, and there was questions about the ag program and, and our junior highs uh, being able to participate in, um, in ag here at Clovis East. Excellent. Question. Uh, Kate Lee, and I'm Pamela Hopkins, and I'm the principal of Reagan. And Reagan does not have any change in Awesome. I'm carrying around this furry thing because that's the online, it doesn't ask. Okay. Um, but online, some of the themes echoed a little bit of what Oras had said about the feed, uh, feedback about walking distance from Miramani, um, concern about rear view moving, neighborhood moving to close north to close west, and some transfer option questions um, along with concerns about the emotional uh, well-being of kids that are impacted as well too. I'm going to come down to our Hiriyama principal who's subbing as Riverview principal today, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just blended in in my red jacket, no one could see me over there. Um, so uh, this is a community not in the Clovis East area, but concerned and showed up to our community meeting tonight and have some of the similar concerns about safety to school and an appropriate use of district resources because where they are now, it's safe walking passes and the switch that's being proposed for them means a much longer walk on much, much busier roads without any sort of protected walkway, so they have that same feeling. Um, so we're talking about a neighborhood at Shepherd and Willow. Pardon me, we didn't have the fancy numbers like 2K was able to use. <laughs> you know, um, we're gonna go with neighborhood 68. Would like to see um, the northeast corner of Shepherd, which isn't developed, but by 2028 would likely start or the projections for would be projected. So perhaps homes that are not built yet, we could impact their boundary and as they become built, send them to a school that is small or smaller looking. Woods, Gettysburg came up, uh, not Gettysburg, sorry, not Gettysburg, Garfield came up because they are projected to be smaller and then you're impacting unbuilt homes and they could stay at their current site. Did I do a good job? Okay. <laughs> 
you wore the right color. We were, we were amp color, so. Okay, um, I'm gonna hand it back over. Can we have a round of applause for our principals and our jazz who did a great job. <laughs> Compliments to the handwriting. I'm gonna hand this back over, you have to hold both. This is the pressure of both. Got it? Okay. Yes. There you go. What a wonderful night. Um, walking around and listening to all of you talk passionately about your school community, about your children, um, it's appreciated. Um, we appreciate your passion. We appreciate your um, intentional thought into this process. There were some um, excellent comments that were made that hadn't been thought of on my end. Um, I think that you brought your best here and we sincerely appreciate that. Just remember that this is just the beginning. There are several more meetings happening. We're gonna have another one in the Clovis East area. Online comments are open. Your principals, myself, are available for conversations. Um, I just encourage you to talk to your communities. Um, obviously, we have a lot of people here tonight, but there's clearly more out there that might have uh, some opinions or some thoughts that we'd love to hear. So please encourage those online comments or attending any of our um, area meetings. We are going to be here for a little bit longer, so if you want to hang out and you want to talk with any one of us, we're happy to talk with you. And um, thank you for attending tonight, and have a great weekend. Week and weekend. <laughs>